Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. We're starting on a Tuesday again. Here I made my current favorite savory toast. I've been meaning to share this with you for a while. It reminds me of the classic Spanish tomato toast, but with a bit of a twist, that twist being hummus. So as soon as you've washed and roughly chopped your tomatoes, add them to a nonstick skillet with a little bit of oil over medium heat. I allowed these to cook for about seven minutes, adding a little bit of salt and potentially other spices towards the end. And then I made some space in the skillet for some frozen pieces of bread. Now onto assembling. It's just gonna be a layer of hummus, followed by the cooked tomatoes, and then also maybe some fresh herbs or sesame seeds. For lunch, I had some leftover takeout these are some Vietnamese glass noodles from the day before. And then I also added some of this almond sesame smoked tofu. It's pretty good. I also added some chives. My YouTube lunch video of the day was not the whole thing, but a small part of this three hour long video essay on what I assumed would solely be a commentary on Twilight, but actually turned out to be like a whole uni lecture. I feel like I learned so much. Is vision death or is it eternal life? Well, it depends on what you mean by death. I promise this is about Twilight. Here I'm preparing for a movie night, AKA I'm making pizza. Both the dough and sauce were store-bought, so this was really quick to make. So I simply just chopped up some tomatoes. Now people always make fun of me for using these bread knives, but they're perfect for cutting tomatoes. Some zucchini. I do like to add the vegan cheese first, because it kind of melts into the marinara sauce. I also added some kimchi to give this more of a fun flavor. And then I finished this off with a bit more vegan cheese. And then we also made some salty popcorn from scratch. Although at the movies, I usually get sweet and salty mix. That is the ideal popcorn order in, in my humble opinion. I haven't done this in a minute, so I actually had to consult my cookbook because I have a popcorn recipe there. But yeah, it's actually quite easy. It's really just important to remember to shake the pot around pretty much the entire time to prevent the popcorn from burning. We end up watching Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I don't want to spoil it, so I'm just gonna say nothing <laughs> other than I thoroughly enjoyed it. Now on to Wednesday morning. Here's me making some coffee. And then I'm having a little beauty guru moment, it seems. For breakfast, I am making a smoothie consisting of frozen mango, spinach, oats, and oat milk. Something must have happened with my blender because it started to smell off almost burnt. I don't think that's a good sign. I mean, I've had it for many, many years at this point. It might be nearing its end. I, I paired the smoothie with a little, well, not a little, giant protein cookie. Lunch was simply just a ploy to get rid of leftovers. So anything that didn't make it onto the pizza landed in this pan. And then I made some room here to add the last remaining pizza slice. Wednesday was quite exciting because me and my friends were heading to a studio, like a TV show studio. A friend of mine is a writer on a new late night show and we got to sit in the audience, which we didn't think would be filmed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After the show, we went to this little bar restaurant called Alaska. They've got the most amazing, fully veganized Spanish food. I'm obsessed with these potato bites. Patatas bravas, they're called, I think. So, so nice. Little reading update. I'm currently on Empire of Storms. I don't know what it is about a boat arc like, whenever characters are on open waters, I'm locked in. 
On Thursday morning, I made oatmeal. This was simply just quick cooking oats, salt, lots of cinnamon, and matcha powder, also some ground flax seeds, and some water. I let this cook for about six minutes over medium heat until I was happy with the consistency. And then as for toppings, I added some dark chocolate chips, which is just my favorite way to sweeten oatmeal. And I also added some frozen raspberries. Here I'm making my lunch. This was another zucchini and a few more tomatoes that I cut into chunks, adding that to a skillet that is way too small. I let the veggies cook for seven to eight minutes and then added all types of ingredients, tomato paste, kimchi, spinach, soy sauce, sesame oil, a little bit of agave syrup, frozen peas. I let this cook for another five minutes or so. And then that was my topping for some cooked rice. I love a meal that is just rice with stuff on top. I went to this little bar cafe to do some work and they even had a vegan apple crumble, which was pretty nice. For dinner, I just had lunch leftovers and then I also prepared the breakfast for the following day. So to my trusty little blender, I added some frozen mango, chia seeds, vegan vanilla soy yogurt, some oats, and then I divided this mixture between a ramekin and a glass. So I let the chia puddings sit in the fridge overnight and then I had one of them the following morning with some added vanilla soy yogurt, some berries, and because the sun was out for the first time in a long time, I also had a little ice latte. Lunch was really simple. I just toasted a bagel in the oven. These ones usually come out really dry, and so I added a bowl of water underneath the oven rack. But anyway, um, I just had the bagel with some vegan cheese that I wanted to try. I also had some bell pepper in the back there, and then ultimately ate the rest of the cheese as the day went on. Also tried and failed to do my latte art for the day. In the late afternoon, early evening, I did some baking for a friend and I was playing around with a cookbook cake recipe. I basically turned this date and maple cake into a blueberry crumble version. Start with preparing the dough. In a large mixing bowl, combine all the wet ingredients first. So sugar, non-dairy milk, vanilla, although I, I actually went for caramel aroma, flax seeds, and melted vegan butter. Then add all the dry ingredients. Mix it all up. And then place this mixture into the fridge for 30 minutes to an hour. In the meantime, grab a 20 centimeter square baking dish. Now for the filling, simply grab a separate mixing bowl and mix together the frozen or fresh blueberries, sugar, a little bit of flour. I was feeling fancy and also decided to add some orange zest. Now retrieve the dough from the fridge and add about two thirds of it to the baking dish, flattening everything with your hands. Then add the blueberries, pressing them down also a bit before crumbling the remaining mixture on top. And then bake until nice and golden brown. Here I'm making a quick little salad consisting of things that I found in my fridge. Baby spinach, avocado, the orange that I used for the cake. Oh, and then I also had another one of those bagels. This isn't a birthday cake, but rather a Yay, you finally found housing in Berlin, cake. Breakfast the next day was really quick and easy because it was just another one of those mango chia puddings. Lunch was this slightly upgraded pesto pasta. 
First, I simply just cut a block of tofu into chunks, transferring that to a bowl, and then mixing that with flour or cornstarch, salt and pepper, and then pan frying everything for about eight minutes. These are corn spaghetti. They don't taste like they're gluten-free, but they don't necessarily hold together very easily, or maybe I was just mixing everything here a bit too aggressively. So they kind of broke down into mini spaghetti. Is there like a proper pasta term for that? Sp spaghettini, maybe? I don't know. Then I left the house. Yay. You can just tell how desperately we've all been craving warm weather. I was so happy. I had a vegan pan au chocolat that was almost as big as my face. And then for dinner, I just ate my leftovers from lunch. The picture of these Nutella stuffed pancakes appeared on my Pinterest not too long ago. It had been on my mind for days. Sunday was the day that I took some time to try and make these myself using my go-to pancake recipe. So here we go. To a medium-sized mixing bowl, add some non-dairy milk, some vanilla, vinegar, sugar, and applesauce. Mix that up and then add all the dry ingredients. That's all-purpose flour, salt, and baking powder. Give this a good mix. By the end of mixing, you should be left with a really nice and light yet thick consistency. Gonna set this aside to rest for just a few minutes while you preheat a nonstick skillet with a bit of coconut oil, bring that to medium heat. Grab your chocolate spread of choice. I'm going with this bittersweet one. Add about a tablespoon per pancake for now, spreading out the batter a little bit until you're happy with the shape and allow this to cook for one to two minutes to firm up a bit. Then add about a teaspoon of the chocolate spread directly to the center and then finish everything off with another half a tablespoon to one tablespoon of the pancake batter. Give this another one to two minutes, flip them and then allow them to cook for another two to three minutes on the other side. I serve these with some strawberries and some coffee, of course. I was scared the chocolate spread would leak a little bit, but yeah, it worked out really well. Highly recommend you try these. Lunch was this salad, inspired by cowboy or Texas caviar, which what I'm making is not the exact same thing, but it is fairly similar. You basically cut all the ingredients up into really small bits. I went with tomatoes, bell pepper, red onion, avocado, and then I also added black beans and chickpeas, which of course you don't have to chop. Also some fresh spinach and fresh cilantro. And then to season everything, I added some lime juice, some balsamic vinegar, sesame oil, because I didn't have any olive oil, a little bit of agave syrup, and some salt. Give this a good mix, taste test, see if you need more salt or any other spices of choice. And then I had this with yet another bagel. The secret to getting these bagels to be really nice and fluffy, I've come to realize, is to lightly brush them with water before adding them to the oven. Guys, yummiest salad that I've made in a while, by the way. Dinner then was the leftovers from lunch that I just ate straight from the bowl. And then I also had these peanut chocolate energy bites that I'm a big fan of. And then I made my way to a friend's birthday party, which also happened to be cowboy themed because Beyonce. On Monday morning, I had a quick muesli made with oats, flax seeds, coconut granola, a banana, some strawberries, a dash of cinnamon, and some oat milk. I also had my last remaining pancake on the side. For lunch, I made a wrap that I highly recommend you make for yourself after watching this. So I chopped up a small red onion, a green bell pepper. I let the veggies both cook for about seven minutes over medium high. Then I added some vegan kimchi, a half a can of chickpeas and black beans. Also added some balsamic vinegar, soy sauce, a bit of ketchup, and I gave everything another five minutes. And that was the filling. 
I added this to a whole wheat wrap that I first added some hummus to. Yeah, some vegan chili mayo went on top, plus some baby spinach. I, yeah, this was really, really good. Man, I think I need to expand my vocabulary. When it comes to saying food is delicious, food is good, yummy, scrumptious, help me out. <laughs> Dinner was very exciting. This is not just a basic pasta with tomato sauce. These are gochujang noodles. It's an old recipe that I haven't tried to make in so long, perfect for those days when you feel like you have hardly anything left in the fridge. So first off, chop up a spring onion. I let it saute for three to five minutes over medium heat. Meanwhile, bring some pasta water up to a boil. Now to the onion, I'm adding some gochujang paste and some tomato paste. And I let this cook for about three more minutes before adding some vegan cream. Since this product is a bit more on the lighter side, I also added some in water dissolved cornstarch. And then I brought everything up to a quick boil, giving the starch a minute or two to activate. And then as for flavor, I also added some white wine vinegar, some salt, <laughs> that's pretty much it. The, the gochujang is so flavorful that you don't really need anything else. Finally, I also added a few handfuls of spinach. But yeah, this pasta is so good. It's so good. Before bed, I tried this new tea. I got it in a tea shop in Vienna. It is popcorn and strawberry flavored. I didn't do much vlogging in Vienna because I was just there to spend time with family. Go to this YouTube video of mine and scroll the comment section. It is filled to the brim with Vienna recommendations for restaurants and coffee shops. Thank you guys again so much for that. It was really, really helpful. And thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform designed to help you build and grow your online brand and business. Start by creating a new website, simply choose one of their many beautifully designed website templates, or start from scratch with a blank slate page, if that's what you prefer. Also use Squarespace to create a fitting new logo and put together a matching newsletter to get your message and products out there and to keep your followers and clients up to date. If you need any extra help, don't hesitate to ask their 24-7 award-winning customer service. Get started today! Simply go to squarespace.com slash minarome and use the offer code minarome to get 10% off your first purchase of a new site or domain.